Megan Olivi and Brett Okamoto backstage in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have just wrapped up our card on ABC, and we've got to start with the main event because just off camera, Jailton Almeida and Daniel Cormier are having the time of their lives. I mean, Jailton made it look easy. His first main event in the UFC, he has a 100% finish rate, which is still intact here. Obviously, we knew the game plan was probably get this to the canvas against Biggie Boy, but in the way he did it, in the time he did it, Brett, it just continues to impress. He did, he did what he was supposed to do. He went out and he had a path to victory and he took it, you know, and, and you expect really good fighters to do that. And he, he did that very, very impressively. I have to say, it, I mean, if we're just calling it like it is, yeah. Rosen Strike has some issues, you know, with that with that grappling. Very, just like very Cyril Gaon had some issues with that grappling and it doesn't really diminish what John Jones did, what Almeida did, sure. but it still leaves like, hey, I want to see more. You know, you, you heard DC say that, I, I believe. <laughs> You know, with this fight and then also the Jones fight, it's just, it's nothing against Jones or Almeida. They're doing their jobs, but it makes you want more. It makes you want to see these challenges. Thankfully, I do think at heavyweight, there are a lot of big challenges coming up. And I do think that there are some 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 new, fresh faces that are going, we're going to have some fun matchups at heavyweight, man. Sergey Pavlovich, yep. Tom, Tom Aspinall. Aspinall. Yep. You're going to have these really fun matchups in the coming years. And it's fun. It's fun to have this new blood. It's fun to have these new skill sets come in and really shine in, in this heavyweight division. I agree. I asked Jai Yilton in our interview, I said, they, they were wrapping me. And I was like, I cannot let him go without giving me a name of who he wants next. And he said, I want Tai Tuivasa. Yeah. And I think that's an interesting uh, matchup, but still, Ty's not known for his grappling prowess. He's not, but you know, he's 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 young. He's 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 very dangerous in the first round. That's a fight I'd be interested in seeing. I mean, unfortunately, the heavyweight division it kind of lends itself to those big punchers who yeah. do have some troubles. Like Derek Lewis would be another interesting matchup, I think, for Almeida. Obviously, he's not known for his ground game, but <laughs> Lewis has, has got the most knockouts in UFC history, right. and, he, and he's fought tied with Matt Brown now. Tied with Matt Brown. That's it. That was a good catch right there. <laughs> and he fought our own Daniel Cormier for for a title once. Yeah. So you can get to the very very top of the heavyweight. <laughs> division with some of these flaws but it is um it, it, it doesn't it doesn't mask the fact that, that they do they, they have some right. and so Almeida is going to have a path to victory it's it's uh you know and, and I'm excited to see some of those new matchups but I do think Lewis um Tai Tuivasa both great matchups and we'll see we'll see it because they know exactly what he's going to bring to the table you no know, exactly I mean congratulations to him because he he told me yesterday that he almost gave up fighting well he did actually for two years got back into the sport in 2016 to from 2014 to 2016 off and obviously it's paid dividends I want to talk about the co-main event here Johnny Walker really has talked about using his defense more intelligently so that he can use his athleticism in the right moments. And that is what he did tonight. I mean, his leg kicks were the story of all of this. Mm -hmm. But Anthony Smith, you know, just didn't pose any threats for him in there, really. Yeah, I, he didn't. Not not in the sense that we ever saw Johnny in trouble. Right. I do think that there were threats there. Uh, Johnny was just doing a, a, a good job of keeping the hands up, keeping the guard up. You know, I thought that there were times where Anthony was timing that counter well. But, you know, Anthony's had what? 100 professional fights at this yeah. point, 200, 300. I mean, the guy has lost a, like, a little bit of his speed, a little bit of his explosiveness. I think he had some of that timing right, but Walker, again, I, I said Almeida did what he needed to do. Walker did what he needed to do. He stayed calm. He stayed smart. There were a couple times in that second round where they were jarring back and forth to yeah. each other, and I thought that maybe Anthony was pulling him into something he didn't want to be a part of. Um, but for the most part, Johnny Walker fought very smart, and that was something we needed to see out of him because this guy – uh, correct me if I'm wrong, up until tonight, had never won a UFC fight that went past the first round. It's always first-round finishes. This guy is a one-round monster. And even tonight, I thought that he lost a little bit of his stamina, so I think he's going to have to address that. He still has some things to work on, but the potential, man, the potential there. When you see him in the first round, I mean, I, I turned to the guy next to me, and I was just like, the guy is a monster, man. He is a monster on yeah. the light heavyweight. So he's got all the skills. It's just, we're, And we're seeing a little bit of maturity each and every step. Absolutely. Maturity was sort of the theme of the, of the week for him when he spoke to us. But on the flip side here, you know, Anthony Smith took off his gloves inside the octagon, but then he left. Um, and then he put, <clears throat> excuse me, put out an Instagram message saying, essentially, I have a lot of thinking to do. If you're advising Anthony Smith, do you say, get back in there? I mean, what more does he have to prove? No, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't, first of all, nothing. He has nothing right. to prove. And second of all, like, I thought he... He had, this was a good showing of himself, right? I mean, he appeared to be in, in good shape to me. You know, he had taken his camp back to Colorado, as you had said. Yes. You know, in, the, in our preview show, you know, you had said, like, yeah, he kind of been doing his own thing there in Nebraska a little bit. I thought he took it seriously. Montoya, the whole nine yards. He, like, physically, I thought he looked great. Yeah. Uh, I thought he came in with the right game plan. I thought that when he was getting hit with those kicks, he didn't give up. He showed that lion heart spirit still. But, hey, man, it's like I just said, how many fights? How many fights is enough fights? You know, and you're, you're going against these guys, these young 
these young guys who do not have the wear and tear on them. Like at the end of the fight, Anthony Smith was surviving. He was not competing. He was surviving. If we're just being honest, and I don't want to see Anthony Smith in that situation. So Anthony, amazing career. We love you. Come over to this side. Yeah, stand next great to us. Stand next to us and talk about the fights. Exactly. Amazing career. Exactly. Amazing career. Hats off to him. I, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more with you. Um, so we'll see what Anthony decides to do and who Johnny Walker is matched up with the next. He did go over to the champ Jamal Hill and kind of say something to him. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But okay, we've got to talk about Ian Gary. He was just here a second ago. Um, and this is a guy who continually rises to the occasion. He has this plan. He's talked about the six fight plan before his title shot where he wants to face two in each division. But I, what I really liked about what he said to us this week was uh, he feels like he's in a situation sort of like a Wonder Boy or a Connor where, yeah, okay, they're fine until they face a grappler. And he wants to face a grappler. He wants <laughs> yeah. to face top 10 guys, yeah. top five guys. He doesn't want things handed to him. He really wants to prove it and earn it out there. And I think that's a really noble mindset, especially in this day and age mm -hmm. with sometimes what we see in the sport go otherwise. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the, the correct mindset to have because if you just want to hand it to you and you want it so fast, this is a sport that's going to humble you very, very, very quickly. So I, I like the call out, Neil Magny. I wasn't expecting it. Who calls, Me who calls out Neil Magny? I mean, yeah, and he said he did know we had a fight against Phil Rowe. He was aware. Sure, sure. Uh, you, you don't call out Neil Magny <laughs> because... A, even like, even if you beat Neil Magny, it's not always pretty when you beat Neil Magny. You know, like and he's you, Neil Magny. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Like you, you kind of want the guy that's like kind of talk some trash at you, get y'all motivated, you know, and then it's not going to come in with great cardio, great game plan. <laughs> you like you want the easier fight. Neil Magny, we know it's not the easier fight. I, I, I want to look back on the history of the sport and see how many times people have called out Neil Magny. I don't believe it's been that very frequently, Megan. So I like the call out. I don't really love the fight though. I just don't. I mean, I have nothing against it. I just think that. Uh, Ian Gary is 25, dude. He's 25. There's no, there's, there's no path, nor is there any sense in rushing him to the top. Just sure. because he's going to beat a guy in, in Daniel Rodriguez who had a number next to him. We are not at the point in Ian Gary's career where we have to start making like it's all about the numbers it's all about the number next to the name it's all about no it's not yeah like, like give him give him meaningful fights give him fun fights continue to not only allow him to develop but raise his profile i think what would do that after tonight brian battle brian battle was calling for he that was. fight brian battle had a great night in charlotte is ian gary would be favored over over brian battle i think it's an appropriate you know next fight it's just i know it's maybe not the grappler that he wants to answer those questions because he is that guy like i want to answer anything that any question yeah. that anybody has of me You'll have time. You'll have time to do it. You know, I like the Brian Battle fight. I think it's fun. I think the buildup would be fun. I think if the UFC goes to, to Boston, make a lot of sense to put that fight in Boston. Sure. Um, I think that's an appropriate next step. If they want to do Neil Magny, though, cool. I, I'd, I'd watch that fight. I'm glad you brought up Boston because before we wrap this up, I've just got to say when Ian Gary uh, won his fight, he came backstage and immediately Dana Hunter and Sean were all back here talking to him. And I kind of said, what was that conversation about? And he said, oh, I just told him my plan. But seemed like he was maybe holding a little back so maybe they're talking to him about it would potentially sure, sure makes sense right i mean we've boston. seen big nights in irish mma in boston before For i would sure be down have. to see another one if they do it totally agree we would be there of course thank you so much for joining us for the coverage from charlotte we're uh, gonna fly home have a great mother's day weekend to everyone out there who is celebrating and uh, we'll see you at the next one Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.